So what I want to do here is talk about all new, all different, amazing Spider-Man. And the reason why is because this title is a perfect example of how some things in all new, all different Marvel aren't really as all new or as all different as we thought they might be. So The Amazing Spider-Man is not actually a restart of Peter Parker's history, which is to say, the story doesn't simply start from square one. Instead, it essentially picks up with his storyline prior to Secret Wars, which is both good and bad. The good is that if someone were looking to get into Spider-Man as part of all new, all different Marvel, they would only have to read a handful of issues to understand what's going on. The bad news is that because of the fact that Amazing Spider-Man is not a complete reboot, the first issue will leave a lot of fans with a lot of questions about what's going on. And so what I want to do here is solve this problem for you guys by winding the clock back to the events prior to Secret Wars and talk about Horizon Labs, Superior Spider-Man, and the launch of Parker Industries. So Horizon Labs was a group led by a man named Max Modell, who was Peter Parker's idol and inspiration for getting involved in science, with Horizon Labs introduced in Amazing Spider-Man issue number 648 and served to operate as a think tank of seven lead scientists, including Peter Parker, all of whom would use their knowledge to continue the advancement of science and technology and maintain Horizon Labs' position as the top provider of the most advanced technology in the Marvel Universe. Now, in Amazing Spider-Man issue 698 through 700 in a story called Dying Wish, Dr. Octopus had been imprisoned in the Raft, which was a prison for superpowered people, but was also dying. Using a miniature robot that he had created, he was successfully able to transfer Peter's mind to the robot and transfer his own mind into Peter Parker, which was then used by Dan Slott to launch the Superior Spider-Man series with Dr. Octopus in the body of Peter Parker. While Superior Spider-Man would see Dr. Octopus attempting to make up for his past misdeeds by acting as a better version of Spider-Man, during the events of Superior Spider-Man issue number 19, Horizon Labs was effectively destroyed when the facility and Superior Spider-Man were yanked into the timeline due to a failed experiment, which again allowed Dan Slott to begin the Spider-Verse event, which had taken place between issues number 19 and number 20. However, as a result of Horizon Labs' destruction, in issue number 22, Superior Spider-Man launched Parker Industries to pick up where Horizon Labs left off. However, when Parker Industries was launched, the only person to join over from Horizon Labs was Sajani Joffrey, a woman who developed reverbium, which amplifies sound rather than absorbing it like vibranium. Now, for much of the Superior Spider-Man series, Parker Industries played a background role in the same fashion as Iron Man and Stark Industries. What I mean is that most of the stories centered on Superior Spider-Man himself and had little to do with Parker Industries, which only popped up in passing or if attacking Parker Industries was part of a villain's scheme. Furthermore, during his time as Peter Parker and in addition to the establishment of Parker Industries, Dr. Octopus introduced several concepts that survived after the conclusion of the Superior Spider-Man series and into all new, all different Amazing Spider-Man post-Secret Wars. The first of these was Anna Maria Marconi. Originally a student at Empire State University, Dr. Octopus had actually fallen in love with Anna Maria, and because she was unaware of the fact that Dr. Octopus was in Peter Parker's body, to her eyes, she had basically fallen in love with the real Peter Parker. The second concept Dr. Octopus had established was the reintroduction of a robot by the name of the Living Brain. Originally a character that had appeared in the 1960s as part of the original Spider-Man series, under the control of Dr. Octopus, the Living Brain was repurposed. While it had only played a background role, I'd like you to keep the living brain in the back of your head because it will become an important part of our discussion for all new, all different Amazing Spider-Man. Having said that, in Superior Spider-Man issue number 30, the series effectively ended when Peter Parker's mind resurfaces, but in truth, this bit of writing was really more on the order of Dan Slott having written himself into a corner and kind of forcing the reveal of Peter Parker's consciousness existing in his body alongside Dr. Octopus. And so at the end of the series, Dr. Octopus essentially gave Peter Parker his body back and disappeared. Now, following the launch of Marvel Now in 2012 and Marvel's attempt to bring in new readers, in 2014, as one of the last publications to be rebranded as a Marvel Now title, Amazing Spider-Man picked up where Superior Spider-Man left off, with Peter Parker back in control of his own body, but also dealing with the realization that he's now in control of Parker Industries. In the first several issues, Marvel established that Anna Maria had figured out Peter Parker was Spider-Man, 
as well as the fact that the version of Peter she had fallen in love with was actually Dr. Octopus, in addition to the fact that Sajani Joffrey was still part of Parker Industries working directly with Peter himself. And so what this does is allow us to segue directly into all new, all different Amazing Spider-Man, which picked up eight months after the end of Secret Wars and the start of all new, all different Marvel. So the comic initially picks up with an advertisement from Peter Parker on behalf of Parker Industries with something called webware. As we're told, the wrist device provides unlimited internet access, data usage, clear phone reception, and high quality storage at an affordable price, all of which is provided by Parker Industries, a global company. Now this is one of the unanswered questions from issue number one in that we don't know what took place to elevate Parker Industries from a successful startup company to one of the largest technology companies on the planet rivaling Stark Industries in size. However, the advertisement is revealed to be part of a marketing campaign which is disrupted by a group of thieves in Shanghai, China. And what we're told is that with Parker Industries operating on a global scale, Peter Parker himself works as Spider-Man on a global scale as well. Furthermore, operating alongside Mockingbird, we learn that Parker Industries is now the main supplier of weapons for S.H.I.E.L.D. Now again, why it is that Stark Industries is not supplying weapons to S.H.I.E.L.D. is not explained in this comic. But once Spider-Man and Mockingbird catch up to the criminals, we learn that they're working for an organization called the Zodiac. What we're also told is that the Zodiac were able to enter the Shanghai branch of Parker Industries with little resistance, indicating that someone on the inside of Parker Industries is working with the Zodiac. Now transitioning to San Francisco, we learn that in order for Peter Parker to operate as a legitimate businessman but ensure that criminals are dealt with, while he operates as Spider-Man where he can, he also brought in a hero by the name of Hobie Brown to work as Spider-Man while Peter isn't around. Now to sidetrack for a second, Hobie Brown was a hero by the name of Prowler who for all intents and purposes was basically a poor man's Batman. Usually operating from the shadows, his biggest claim to fame was during Civil War when he was the first hero arrested after the deadline for registration had passed. And so in truth, bringing him into the Spider-Man group was an intelligent decision since he was basically a character that Marvel could never really do anything with. Now while this scene only serves to set the stage for how Peter Parker deals with being a businessman and Spider-Man at the same time, the story transitions to the wedding of Max Modell, the former CEO of the now defunct Horizon Labs, and his partner Hector. Now the importance of this moment is that for Peter, Max had been a huge inspiration and his reason for getting into science. In addition to this, Horizon Labs had offered Peter the chance to expand on his knowledge in ways that he was unable to achieve before. As a result, he took the step of appointing Max and Hector to the heads of the West Coast branch of the company. Furthermore, in an attempt to provide a haven for those with an aptitude for science in the form of the Parker Institute for Technology, Peter instead chose to rename it to Horizon Industries as a tribute to Max and everything he had done for Peter. However, in the midst of their wedding reception, the group is attacked by the Zodiac. As they state, Peter Parker's webware device allows for access to data that would otherwise be restricted, and while he tries to figure a way out of the situation without compromising the security of his company or revealing his identity as Spider-Man, Hobie Brown jumps in wearing his Spider-Man costume. But because he does not possess a spider sense, and because his role as the Prowler saw him working from the shadows, while he does his best against the Zodiac, in the end, he doesn't possess the skills to overcome the group. Seeing the death of Hobie Brown as the only logical conclusion to the fight, Peter Parker hands over his webware device, which he's also encrypted. And so with the Zodiac departing, Peter turns his attention to Sajani, revealing that he's been reviewing security footage and come to the conclusion that she was the insider allowing the Zodiac to access Parker Industries. Because Sajani wanted the company to function as a conglomerate rather than a humanitarian system, her goal was to sabotage Peter's projects in an effort to oust him as CEO by their board of directors and replace him with herself. However, after being confronted with this information, Sajani agrees to step off and allow Peter to pursue his vision for Parker Industries. And so transitioning back to London as the story comes to an end, we pick up with Anna Maria. With Sajani returning and calling an emergency meeting of the senior executives, her tone irritates Anna Maria who jokingly instructs the Living Brain to execute her. While Living Brain states that his programming doesn't allow it to kill people and Anna Maria jokes about a sarcasm upgrade, the story ends with the reveal that Dr. Octopus had backed up a copy of himself within the Living Brain's programming. Put your hands up. 
With that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and I hope it made sense. If it did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.